It's Christmas, a time for celebration, a time of goodwill to all men. All that is, except one, Ebenezer Scrooge, a man whose contempt for others is matched only by his greed and lust for wealth. But Scrooge is about to be taught a lesson he'll never forget. You will be haunted by three spirits. I think I'd rather not. Charles Dickens at Christmas Carol and George C. Scott as Ebenezer Scrooge. A Christmas Carol. Merry Christmas to everybody and a happy new year to the world! Who are you? I told you, George, I'm your guardian angel. What do you want, Barry? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Mr. and Mrs. Martini, welcome home. This is what I wished for. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. It's Charlie Brown and the Peanuts Gang preparing to spend another joyous holiday together. Only this year, Charlie Brown is getting a little fed up with what seems to be the new Christmas spirit. Find the true meaning of Christmas when money, money, money. A Charlie Brown Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. It's a tradition in homes across America, beginning somewhere after Halloween and right before Christmas. Families gather around their televisions with their popcorn and hot chocolate. Grown men are reduced to tears. Women declare, well, that's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Hollywood figured out decades ago that no matter what age you are. Or religion. Or tolerance for mush. Everybody loves a Christmas movie. Some Christmas movies have become film classics and have earned a place in the most beloved movies of all time. But what does a great movie start with? Oh, oh, money! Movie stars! Studio executives are so overwhelmed with self-importance that they can't see beyond the bottom line of what their earnings will be worldwide. Well, okay. There's that. But... More importantly, the one thing that a great blockbuster really needs, the thing all great writers and directors are drawn to? A story. A great story is where it all begins. Consider the story of a man who had it all. Who thought he had it all. Well, actually, he had little. Oh, he had money. He had a lot of money. But that was about all he had. He had a spirit visit him. He had an employee who had nothing. Uh, the employee had everything. But he had no money. He had the most important thing. And there begins a classic telling. The beloved story. The cautionary tale. A, a Christmas, Christmas Carol. Carol. Now this was a really long movie. How in the world are we going to fit this into five minutes? 
I have faith in us. Ready? Once, back in the olden days, the days of yore, the time of yesteryear, lived an old man who was a very old and lonely man, and his name was Scrooge McDuck. What? Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> no, just Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge, you know, George C. Scott. Oh, sorry, I grew up with the Mickey Mouse version. Fine, okay. Where was I? Lonely old man, his name was Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah, yes, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, Bob Cratchit, that's absurd. Why should I give you a whole day off? Because, sir, tomorrow's Christmas. Christmas? Humbug. But all right, take tomorrow off, but come in real early the next day. Really? Well, we all have a few minutes for this story, so better get on with the day. Oh, right. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. So, well, Mr. Scrooge closes up shop and heads home. As Mr. Scrooge settles in for the night, he begins to hear noises in his house. Things that go bump in the night. Ooh. What? What is this? Who's there? Ah! Hello? Marley! My old business partner. How is it you're here? Unless you're a ghost. I am a ghost. I see dead people. <laughs> and I've come to give you a warning, Ebenezer. This night, you will be visited by three ghosts. The ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future. Uh, but I'm afraid of ghosts. I don't want to be visited by them. Why is this happening? Because, Ebby, you're a mean old man and nobody likes you. And I don't want you to end up like me, suffering for an eternity. Eternity, eternity, eternity. But, but Marley, you were a good man, a, a good businessman. Maybe so, but my business should have been mankind. <laughs> no, no. You're just a, uh, a figment in my imagination. Something I ate. That uh, burrito I had for lunch today at Taco Heaven. Oh, I assure you, it's real. No. Go away from me, spirit. So, the spirit disappears. And Scrooge, believing he has suffered a terrible hallucination from some suspicious food, falls asleep in his bed, only to be awakened later that night. Scrooge, Scrooge. What? Well, who's there? Scrooge, it is I, the ghost of Christmas past. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Not possible. If I can't see you, you're not there. What are you for? Open your eyes and let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Where are we? We are in the past, Ebenezer. In your past. This is your... Oh! My boyhood home. Yes. That child. Is you, Ebenezer, abandoned all alone? Yes, I remember. His mother is dead and his father is angry with him. His mother died at childbirth, so his father sent him away to this school. Yes, Ebenezer, your childhood wasn't all that great. But I grew up into a young man. I met a young woman. Her name was Belle. That means beautiful. Yes, we know. You fell in love with Belle and she loved you back. Oh, it was the happiest time of my life. I wanted to marry her, but I needed to make my fortune. And while you were off making your fortune, Belle got bored. But I became rich. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, whatever happened to Belle? She married and had a whole bunch of children, but she's blissfully happy, unlike you. Hmm. And now ends the past portion of this haunting. I must leave you. Now it's my turn. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Let's go see what everyone's doing right now. Oh, spirit, I'm quite tired. I think I'd like to take a small nap. Oh, no, no, no. No nap for you. You have plenty of time to rest when you're dead, which will be soon enough. What was that? Never mind. Cecil, the ghost of Christmas future, will tell you about that soon. <laughs> His name is Cecil? Forget it. We're at the home of your employee, Bob Cratchit, and his son, Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone. Tim is very sick and doesn't have much longer to live. Father, will there be any supper for Christmas? 
Oh yes, Tim. The finest goose you have ever seen. But that's not much of a goose. Curious, since you pay him so well. Father, will there be Christmas presents? We have each other. That's all the Christmas we need. Here's a toast to Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge? That old miser. I'd like to give him a punch in the- God bless us, everyone. Now, now, dearest. We mustn't speak ill, Mr. Scrooge. It is Christmas, after all. To Mr. Scrooge. To Mr. Scrooge. God bless us, everyone. We get it, Tim. Oh, spirit. I can't watch anymore. This is too painful, that poor child. Don't you see? You're a part of this. This is all you're doing. Hum me no more, spirit. Hum me no more, please. I can't watch anymore. Oh, spirit of Christmas future? Please, I can take no more. I've learned my lesson. Please let me go home. What is it you want to show me? Please move on so I can end this nightmare. No, no, it can't be. No! No, spirit, let me go. I don't want to die. I don't want to end up like Marley. I don't want to miss Christmas. I don't want to miss the season finale of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Please, Spirit, wait. I'm awake. Scrooge was so excited that his visits from ghosts were over, he ran to the window and said, You there, boy, what day is it? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir, duh. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Run to the store and buy the prize turkey in the window. And Merry Christmas! So, Ebenezer Scrooge bought the turkey in the window. He had it delivered to the Cratchit's house, and not only did he provide them with enough food for a feast, he also doubled Bob's salary and made sure Tiny Tim would live. God bless us, everyone. What a gift to be given. A second chance. A chance to change, to make things different. Just like new fallen snow that makes everything new and clean, our Heavenly Father grants us the chance to empty our lives of the bitterness and regret. Redemption. Grace. Mercy. Themes that are wildly accepted over the Christmas season. Whether you're a church-going believer or not, people are searching for a second chance. A do-over. I wish I'd been better with my money. I wish I hadn't said that to my mom. I wish my marriage wasn't suffering. I wish my child would come back home. But thankfully, we serve the God who gives second chances. We serve a God who specializes in grace. Consider the story of a man. A man who had everything. He had a family who loved him. He had a nice house. He had a good job. He was well respected within the town. He made it possible through his building and loan business for people to have a home. A roof over their heads. Because George loved his community. He had a spirit who visited him. No, not a spirit, an angel. He had a, a wonderful, wonderful life. I'm telling you, Mr. Potter, you'll not get the best of me. Now, George, calm down. I'm not trying to get the best of anybody. Clearly, you're building in loans. Can't pay up on the money you owe people. So I'm here to help. Come work for me, and everything will be all right. I can give you the money to keep you out of jail. Never. I'll never work for you. You're just a mean old man who wants to own this town. George Bailey was the sort of man that everyone loved. He was the town's hero. He saved his brother from an icy death when they were just boys. He stayed home with his parents until his younger brother could come home from the war, giving up his dreams to travel. He kept the town together and united during a stock market crash. He was a man who seemed to have it all together. But George found himself in a situation where all hope seemed lost. In fact, everything seemed lost. 
Yeah, crazy Uncle Billy lost a stack of money that was supposed to keep things afloat. But sometimes, even the best of men have their breaking points and need to be reminded about the most important things in life. Confound it! Why can't anything go right? George, George, what's the matter? Nothing. Who's playing the piano? Can't you learn a different song? But Daddy, I'm practicing for the Christmas party. Humbug. Oh, nothing. I was just thinking of a story and that word got stuck in my head. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. Everything's so miserable. I'm just gonna go run around in the snow and think about how terrible my life is. But George... So... George wandered around in the snow and darkness. Went to a bar and got into a fight. Crashed his car into a tree. And finally came upon a bridge. And a thought. A thought. A thought crossed his mind. I could just end it all here. It could all be over. I wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. I wouldn't have to feel regret or disappointment. People wouldn't have to put up with me. I wouldn't have to let anybody down anymore. I've lost all our money. My family hates me. Mr. Potter's gonna have me arrested because I can't pay on a loan. I'm gonna lose everything. I might as well just. And just as George contemplated ending it all, there was a big splash in the icy water below. You know, there are days when we feel like there's nothing left to do but give up. Like we shouldn't have gotten out of bed that day. That maybe, well, well, maybe the world would just be better off without us. Enter Clarence, the angel. Now George, being the honorable man that he is, jumped in to save Clarence, who jumped into the icy water below. What would you go do a thing like that for? I did it to save you. What? You jumped first. Well, you were going to jump, so I jumped first, and that helped you change your mind. Oh, I'd wish I'd never been born. <laughs> wow, you just get right to it, don't you? Tick tock, tick tock. All right. George Bailey, since you are so miserable and believe that the world would be better off without you, I hereby declare you never been born. Oh, now you're just talking crazy. Never been born? Sheesh! Who do you think you are, an angel? Wait, this is Harry Bailey. That's my brother. But he didn't die. He went on to the war to save a whole transport of soldiers. No. All of those men died, George. Harry was never there to save them because you were never there to save him from falling in the lake all those years ago. But where's Mary? Where's my wife? Oh, you really don't want to see her. This is where it gets really dramatic. And this is the part of the movie where I cry every time. <laughs> me too. You have to tell me. <laughs> George found Mary closing up the library. She was an old maid. Hey! Well, that's what the story says. She was an old maid. Did you have to say it again? You made me lose my place. <laughs> oh, wait. Old maid. <laughs> George is shocked when he sees her and tries to convince her that she is his wife. Mary, Mary, don't you know me? Ah! Why are you screaming? Ah! Hey, what's going on here? You get out of here, man we've never seen before, and who for all intents and purposes might as well never been born. <laughs> George ran back to the bridge to reconsider his original thought of ending it all. After all, he had lost everything he cared about. His family. His, well, yeah, that was about it. He loved and cared for his family. He loved his town and all the people in it. They were all his family. People are what mattered the most to George. Not money or possessions. He cared about making a difference in people's lives. Dear God, I just want to live again. Please let me have my life back. I just want to live. George, George, you better come with me. I've been looking all over town for you. Wait, you know me? You know my name? Of course I do, George. Merry Christmas! <laughs> so, George ran home to his wife and children not caring anymore that he would probably be thrown in jail because Mr. Potter wanted George arrested. Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas, Movie House. Merry Christmas, Emporium. Merry Christmas, you old building and loan. <laughs> George ran all the way home to find the police waiting there for him. But George didn't care. He didn't care he was about to go to jail. Because he had his family back. But not only that, there was a bonus. 
People were flooding their house from all over the town to show their love and support for George. And George and Mary Bailey lived happily ever after. Because George finally realized that happiness wasn't about the things you can accumulate. It's not about having the most money or the biggest house. It's about the lives you touch and the people you surround yourself with. Wow, that's great for the Baileys. But what about me? What? What about me? When do I get my Havlo ever after? Yeah, I've been waiting around for so long and I'm still stuck in a rut. Nothing seems to go right. Maybe I should just jump in an icy river and see if someone will come bail me out. It's been three months and I still can't find a job. How am I supposed to give my kids Christmas presents this year? Yeah, it just doesn't seem to matter how good or faithful I am. I can't seem to catch a break. I mean, I go to church, I serve my community, I even faithfully tithe. And my marriage is in shambles. My wife is done with me. Where's my clearance? Yeah, why don't things ever seem to work out for us like they did for George? Why is it that at Christmas, we feel so much more inept? For once, I'd love to give my kids the really big Christmas they deserve, but I just can't seem to keep my head above water. Christmas isn't about giving, it's about receiving. You're right, it's about giving. Wait, that's not what you said. You said it's about receiving? Yeah, what's up with that? Christmas is not about what you get. It's about what you give. No, that's where you're wrong. How can she be wrong? And how can you say that? Consider the story of a boy, a round-headed kid who had an obsession with kicking footballs. Oh, you mean Charlie? Shh, <laughs> don't say his name. Yeah, we can't use his name because of copywriting. <laughs> Why is it so bad to say Charlie? Shh, <laughs> good, hold her right there. Hey. Where are you going with this? Oh, consider the story of a boy. A boy who loved his dog? He wanted to be happy at Christmas, but just couldn't seem to get in the spirit. So Lou, a particular girl who masqueraded as a therapist and was known to pull footballs out of from under would-be kickers, put him in charge of a Christmas pageant to see if that might lift his spirits. And that's where everything went wrong. The round-headed kid could not get everybody to focus on the Christmas pageant. And that other kid that was playing the piano would not stop playing the piano. And none of the kids would stop dancing. It was a big old mess. After rescuing a tiny Christmas tree to put in the Christmas pageant, our f to get the ball rolling and being made fun of by everyone else because of said Christmas tree, our favorite blockhead gave up and realized he would never know the true meaning of Christmas. But then, a wise kid with a blanket? All the smart and cool people carry blankets. Just saying. Okay, a wise kid with a blanket reminded everyone of what Christmas was all about. Lights, please. Now there were shepherds nearby, living out in a field, keeping guard over their flock at night. When an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among, peace among people with whom he is pleased. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim 
Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Christmas is about receiving. For in this way, God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son. So that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Christmas is about receiving the gift that God has given us, eternal life through Jesus. Maybe your life isn't Hollywood. No one's is. But I contend that God has outdone anything that Frank Capra or Steven Spielberg has ever put on a silver screen. His plan is so much bigger for your life than Hollywood could ever dream of. His story, his plan, begins with a baby. A man. And a woman. Chosen by God to deliver a very special gift to all mankind. And talk about special effects. I mean, come on, man. A big giant star in the sky to lead the people to the baby? Yeah, and what about later when he grows up? He's all like, I'm walking on water, y'all. And then he's going around healing people and casting out demons. He's like, hey, demon, come out. Oh, remember that one time when all those people were hungry and he takes the fish? Yes, Jesus did all of that. But before he grew up, he was born to a simple carpenter. But then he grew up and put all those Pharisees in their place. And he was like, hey, if you're without sin, cast the first stone. Remember that? That was awesome. Yes, well... He did that too. Oh, and there was this one time he's down the desert with the devil, and he goes, hey, if you're the son of God, you could totally take over everything, right? And Jesus goes, yeah, I still could, but I'm not gonna, because that's not the plan, loser. Yes, well, you're right there too. But the point is... And then he was out uh, this one time in the desert with the robot, and, the, and there was this princess, and she goes, you're my only hope. And then he got in this big spaceship and blew up the big shining star, and he was like, pew, pew, pew. And then he fell down to this pit, and he was like, no, you're not my father. <laughs> the point is... <laughs> and I'll be honest, all right, all right, that's enough out of you. I'm sorry. The point is that God and his infinite wisdom had a plan. <laughs> a screenplay. <laughs> well, okay, a screenplay for your life. God is the master storyteller and has written the story of your life. We all like to think that in our story, we're the disheartened bank manager who saves the day and wins the hearts of his friends and family, or the dramatically rich miser who has a classic change of heart, and yes, even the hero who saves the princess. But what you're most likely to find is that your story is similar to the one that God told about himself. A simple child from a simple birth with humble beginnings in a small backwoods town just eking out enough from a simple life until it was time. Time to help the helpless. Time to heal the sick. Time to feed the hungry. Time to be the light. Time to share his story. As you celebrate the greatest story ever told this Christmas season, remember that your story. The one that God has crafted just for you. It isn't finished. For the one who began a good work in you will perfect it till the day of Christ Jesus. God bless us. Everyone.